All right. So today we have Michael D. Cohen, who is best known for playing Schwaz in Nickelodeon's Henry Danger and Danger Force. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing great. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Thanks Good. for having me. Of course, yes. And happy Pride. How are you celebrating this year? Uh, gosh, I'm doing a lot of these kinds of interviews, which I love. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've been going to some events. Um, I have, um, there's a short film that I'm in that's in some of the festivals. So it's just kind of a, you know, fun time. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Well, let me ask you, what does Pride mean to you? That's such a good question. You know, I've never been asked that. Um, I think it's, uh, being out in the world authentically, uh, you know, pride by definition is the opposite of shame. Uh, and and it's just about knowing where you came from, knowing who you are on an authentic basis and being uh, being willing and excited to stand in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And like I said, you are best known as playing Schwaz in Nickelodeon's Henry Danger and now it's spinoff Danger Force. So what have you enjoyed the most about playing this character after all these years? I really like doing the accent <laughs> and the, the writers are so good on, mm -hmm. on the shows. You know, there's, you know, people talk about kids TV and they kind of, sometimes people poo poo kids TV as I said, this is not normal kids TV. I mean, this is the writing on it. I wouldn't have been able to hang in there this long if the writing wasn't as good as it is. I mean, it is so good mm -hmm. and it's for adults, you know, there's a lot yeah. of stuff in there that are references only adults will get. So I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I enjoy just being able to play off the writing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So have you always had a passion for acting? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how how does, it? yeah. How did your journey begin? I mean, I've talked about this a lot. And, you know, I'm talking about more and more, I guess, talk about pride. Like, I think I was a little bit embarrassed to talk about this before because I thought, well, people aren't going to believe me or they're not going to get it. But whatever. Um, you know, I was four years old. You know, I was watching... TV with my family and we we gathered around the one thing that we all united around was this, the Carol Burnett show. Okay. And that was really formative for me. You know, I saw myself reflected back in that show on some level of like that's who I am, that's what I want to do, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. That that resonates like like that it was so definitive for me. And so, you know, at 4 years old I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's what mm -hmm. I know I want to do. That. Yeah, that's what you want to do. And I love that you have like a little photo of Carol behind you. I do. I just got that recently. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> I love it. Love it. So what do you always hope audiences take away from your work and performances? Um, laughter um, or insight uh, or both, um, you know, inspiration, you know, all my work, like I, I, am, I teach, um, I, I, I can't imagine just doing one or the other acting or just teaching. I have to do both, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's the same. It's in like in teaching, I want to inspire and help people transform. Uh, and it's the same in my acting. I'm hoping that that will somehow, you know, uh, facilitate growth or transformation or, you know, it's, it, and, and entertainment, entertainment's really important. People grow and, and, and nurture themselves through entertainment. So, uh, it's both and and having a connection to people through what I do, like them appreciating what I do. I just know how important it was to me when I was a kid watching TV, what that did for me. And so if I can do something similar um, for other people, that that's huge, hugely satisfying. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So I've seen you in Henry Danger and countless other shows like Modern Family and Wizards of Waverly Place, but I had no idea that you were trans and you've actually collaborated with Glad on a piece for Time magazine where you openly discussed your transitioning journey. So what was was that the first time that you really talked about that publicly? Uh, Well, publicly, as in like the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't I was never really like I was never secretive or stealth I was just like this isn't is it relevant or is it not relevant and then the people who I shared with I shared with you know I wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like you know nobody knew it's just that it wasn't out there publicly mm -hmm. and piece I was also taking a big risk in that I don't define myself as trans I don't say I'm trans because okay. it doesn't you know I say I'm of trans experience because to me and for many people, it's their identity, and I totally respect that, and it's completely valid. For me, it's not my identity. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's my experience, and it's an important experience, and one that I'm very, I'm proud of, and that I share because I think it has value to share. 
and uh and has value for me to share it <laughs> you yeah. know so, um but but yeah i mean i i'm i'm a man i'm male that's my identity that resonates in truth for me mm -hmm. uh but before that you know people labeled me you know they were like oh you're a lesbian i'm like well i guess technically because i'm a <laughs> with a woman and mm -hmm. I appear to be a woman at that time, uh, <laughs> you know, but it didn't fit. And that's a little bit, that's how I kind of feel with the trans label. Like everybody's going to put that label on me, uh, but I don't put it on me. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel truthful. And I did this journey so I could feel authentic and truthful. So why would I take on another word that doesn't feel truthful? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I try and look at, I'm very, you know, much about like, let's look at the truth, you know, yeah, what yeah. is your essential truth? What is the essence of who you are? What is that? And for some people that is trans and that's beautiful and that's great. Mm -hmm, definitely. Me, that languaging doesn't, doesn't make me feel that way. It makes me feel like I'm not being fully authentic somehow mm -hmm. because the man stuff gets really, you can be a trans man and that's totally, you know, but even that, I feel like that doesn't somehow feel, I don't, I, just, I want to go for language that feels right. Yeah. So for sure. So you go, you say you have a trans experience. I have a trans experience. And so that's what I put out in that article. And, you know, I did collaborate with Glad. you know, I had many conversations with Nick Adams and, you know, how to do this and how to say like, look, I want to share my truth. I also want to share it in languaging that works for me. And so, yeah. um, yeah. And, and I got a lot of feedback from a lot of other people. I was like, yeah, that's how I feel too. But oh. I use this language because it's convenient and more easy. And I'm like, yeah, we're eat more easy, more easy. Um, <laughs> easier, easier. Mm -hmm. it's easier. Um, but yeah, so that was, you know, it was kind of both. Those were, you know, I wanted to share my story, but I wanted to share my story on my terms. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And because you work with a network, because you work with a network like Nickelodeon and you're on a show aimed towards kids, was there any backlash from people? It's like saying, oh, now this person's like grooming kids and all that, blah, blah, blah. The ignorant responses. Not at that time. Okay. Not I mean, I chose the perfect time, really, where <laughs> there was enough awareness that people could, you know, know what it was. Because when I transitioned in 2000, nobody knew what it was. It was, mm -hmm. you know, so, but it was before all of this nonsense about grooming and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so I didn't get that kind of backlash. Later, when I did the Trans Youth Acting Challenge, I started to get a little bit more of that backlash. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, um, you know, as I started to say before we started rolling on this, uh, I posted something on my Instagram that said something like, I don't know, to all the homophobes, you know, ha a happy, like, the, you know, I hope this month is, you know. A very uncomfortable <laughs> month. Yeah, it's an uncomfortable yeah. month or something like that. And I just thought, because I thought it was hilarious. I mm -hmm. actually thought, like, even if you're a homophobe, you would find it hilarious. Like, yeah. it's just so, it was so funny to me, because I don't tend to post stuff that I feel is going to be divisive. Um mm -hmm. I post stuff in my truth and in ways to unite people. And oh my God, talk about the, I got, I was looking at comments, go, comments going like these comments never would have appeared mm -hmm. four or five years ago. Yeah, exactly. Nobody would have taken that. Like they were so hostile. I'm like, wait, this is funny guys. <laughs> it's just, it's unfortunate that we're like going like five steps back right now. We're going five steps back because we, we went six steps forward exactly yeah i agree and i've seen that meme that you were talking about because i've seen that everywhere on my in, on my social media and i thought it was hilarious as well like yeah i hope all these homophobes do have an uncomfortable month we're not going to hide ourselves we're going to show our pride so well, it was yeah. just it was just acknowledging the truth of it you yeah. know it was just acknowledging the truth that yeah this 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 month is going to be awkward for some people you know it's like yeah yeah exactly well i love that you're now focused on creating opportunities for young actors and writers of the trans experience can you talk more about that uh, well, yeah, I did the Trans Youth Acting Challenge, uh, you know, and and that continues to be a database for casting and producers who are looking for kids uh, that don't, you know, that have don't fit the 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 typical gender mm -hmm. uh, binary gender norms of um, at least assigned at birth kind of stuff. <laughs> that was really <laughs> eloquent. Um, <laughs> You know, basically trans kids, uh, non-binary kids, gender non-conforming kids. So, uh, and they exist and they are real. Yeah. Um, so it's for, you know, we've, we're have we continuing to, me and uh, Danielle Pretzfelder, who was the casting director on it at the time we, we collaborate mm -hmm. um, to help people with, 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 you know, that kind of casting. Um, she's much more active because she's a casting director in it, but we, we work together at times. 
Um, and then um, I have a project called Rote, which is Writers of Trans Experience that I've been working on for a few years to try and help writers of trans experience uh, get out there, get some mentoring, that kind of thing. So it's in development. Um, yeah. And so it's still it's still in development uh, and kind of waiting for some things to happen, like a writer strike being over and things like yeah. that to, to move forward. Awesome. Fantastic. And you have also showcased your talent behind the camera by directing a couple episodes of Danger Force, including Manly Men, which received a GLAAD Media Award nomination in the Outstanding Kids and Family Programming category. How meaningful was that for you? Can't even say. I mean, I just got chills and a little emotional just even <laughs> thinking <laughs> about that experience. Um, you know, it was the first time Nickelodeon had uh, a trans character, let alone a trans teen uh, with the actor who of trans experience. I mean, it was, you know, it was extraordinary. And that that kid got cast out of the trans youth acting challenge that, mm -hmm. that I did. Um, it opened up so much opportunity for them and the way it worked out. I mean, the way we wrote it, it was like, it had to be an identical twin. Yeah. And, and how are we going to find that? And I was like, I don't know how we're going to find it, but I know we will. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, Sasha, you know, Sasha Cohen happened to have the last same, isn't the same name as me, but we aren't related. Um, although I'd love to, I'd love to adopt him as my, my godchild. <laughs> um, an identical twin sister. Mm -hmm. So it's just perfect, perfect casting. And they were perfect in it. And, and just, you know, the recognition by GLAD around it, um, the, all of it, it was just such an amazing experience. Very, very, it was amazing. And it was amazing to see Sasha do what I had so longed to do as a kid. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Be who I am and be on TV. I mean, like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's amazing. And now currently you are partnering with the Trevor Project, Human Rights Campaign, P5 National and other LGBTQ plus organizations to host a four part workshop to help families impacted by the anti uh, trans legislation. Is that correct? We yes, we did that um, in last October. Okay. Uh, it was called Never Alone. And um I wanted to, early in the year, I was just like, uh, as all of these legislative pieces were coming out, which is even, I never thought that it could be way worse than it was. It's getting worse. And it was, it's much worse now. But at the time I was like, oh, it can't get any worse, but let's help these, let's help these families. And so um, I enlisted PFLAG, who's been, we've collaborated in a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, Liz Owen, who's amazing, the communications director there. And we got together all these other national organizations and, um, hosted this four-part series uh, that helped parents. And we had a kid's summer camp at the end of it, just cool. like a two-hour online summer camp. Kind of, well, not summer camp, it's like October. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving camp. Um, and uh, we had um, Jules Gill Peterson come and talk. Uh, and we, you know, we had a, a legislative updates um, and all those kinds of things. So it was it was this whole series that helped unite uh, some families that had not been introduced to each other. And there was a, a parents group that got started out of that. Um, so it was it was just trying to in, improve the morale at the mm -hmm. time. Okay. And so, um, yeah. And now we have like some Facebook pages where parents can connect. Um, the Trans Youth Acting Challenge now has that. It's an active Facebook page where they can connect with, you know, opportunities for the kids or, or share support, that kind of thing. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Well, Michael, what are some future goals you hope to accomplish with your career and platform? Oh, wow. Well, um, I'm teaching a lot, so I'm really getting back into that, which I love. Uh, I have a book on acting that I'm writing, so I'm teaching weekly classes and doing a retreat in July. Um, so I love doing that. And I'm and this is all kind of like while the writer strike is on, I'm cultivating these other things that I <laughs> do when I'm busy, you know, on set mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing public speaking and, you know, giving talks to uh, business groups and corporations and that kind of thing on authenticity and, you know, sharing my story. Um, and I'm, I've got a couple of series that, that I've developed uh, that as soon as it's time we get to go pitch, mm -hmm. um, but they're, you know, one of, one of which I'm writing, co-writing with Andrew Thomas, who I mm -hmm. wrote Only Men with on Danger Force. Um, so we're writing a series and I've got a series of my own that I'm writing and uh fin the pilots are finished and the cool. pitches are ready to go so we're just kind of waiting for the open door and <laughs> got some other projects that i'm writing too i've got the solo show that got postponed because of <laughs> COVID. it just seems like it's if it's not one thing it's another it's like yeah, yeah. 
it's like whatever it, but um, I guess it just you know I'm not the only one these things affect uh so <laughs> <That's> not influencing <laughs> me god <laughs> um, you know we're in this together so just kind of you know okay how can I, how can this serve us how can this yeah. serve us what was that yeah. question yeah, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on. I'm really excited, you know, about about the next steps. I have such a fantastic team around me that I'm really grateful for, and and uh, we're going to keep moving things forward. Awesome, fantastic. Well, Michael, Michael, how can one stay up to date with you? Oh well, a number of ways. Um, I've got uh, my Instagram, which is at Michael D Cohen. Uh, TikToks at Michael D. Cohen. Um, Facebook is official Michael D. Cohen. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm pretty much off Twitter. I think that's going to be- A lot of people are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a Twitter account, but I'm not using it. Uh, and then my websites, uh, my acting website's michaeldcohen.com. And then my um, acting, or my teaching website is uh, MD Cohen Studio or michaeldcohenstudio.com. Okay, fantastic. All right, then before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you would like to mention or plug at this time? Um, oh, and if people want to reach out to me directly, they can email me at info at michaeldcohen.com, okay. by the way. Um, uh, any other, oh yeah, well, I've got, there's some short films coming up. So you can look yeah. for those if you're, you know, Frameline, June 18th. I'm in a, a film called uh, Agents of Change, mm -hmm. which is an all, everybody that's in it is of trans experience or, or queer in some okay. way. And that's, uh, I think it's it's showing in the short film block on uh, the 18th of June okay. uh, at Frameline in San Francisco. And then Corners is a film I'm so proud of. Um, it's a really kooky short film that I did. Um, uh, James Berlowski is the writer, director, producer, brilliant, brilliant guy. He's like a Judd Apatow, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's also, I'm co-starring in that um, with um, uh, Linda Cash, who is brilliant. And you'll recognize her from Christopher Guest movies. Okay. Uh, she's just so brilliant, and um, it's she and I in this short film, and and uh, anyway, I'm really proud of that. So corners, so look for that, and it's in a bunch of film festivals coming up. Perfect. So we have a lot in the works. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah.